We've just seen how cells can work together to form those four different primary tissue types in the body. And perhaps not surprisingly, it turns out that tissues can work together as well. If we have two different, two or more different tissue types working together in order to perform some overall function, then we would call that an organ. So let's start with a basic definition here. An organ is just um, a collection of two or more tissue types, again, working together to perform a specific function. So there are lots of different examples of organs throughout the human body. Um, just to name a few, the mouth could be considered an organ, the skin actually is considered an organ, and the heart is considered an organ. So each of these, if we think about them individually um, and think about what tissue types are present, um, for example, let's just think about the heart for a moment. So the heart, definitely it has muscle tissue present, right? It's able to contract and beat, um, but it also has connective tissue present for sure. Um, it has a, a blood supply. There are blood vessels that go throughout the heart in order to provide nourishment. So that means that definitely connective tissue is present and because um, blood is connective tissue. Um, and the fact that there are blood vessels means that we have epithelial tissue present, right? And we know that blood vessels are lined with epithelial tissue. So that's three tissue types present so far in heart. The only one we haven't mentioned is nervous tissue. And it turns out that's present as well. There, are, there um, is some nerve signaling that goes to the heart. So actually, all four tissue types are present in this single organ. That's true for a lot of organs. A lot of organs have all four tissue types present. All right, um, so as we think about the human body, it, uh, it a lot of times happens that organs work together in order to perform something complementary. If we think about the digestive system, just as an example, the digestive system overall, it helps us to be able to digest food, but there are a lot of different organs involved in this process, and each organ does its own sort of specific job along the way. So with the digestive system, this is a system that starts in the mouth, that includes the mouth. Um, this is where digestion begins through the action of saliva. And then we've got the esophagus, um, which carries the food down to the stomach. The, di the stomach carries out a different set of digestive processes. This is where a lot of our proteins end up getting digested. Um, and then into the intestines, this is where a lot of the fat processing takes place. So there are a lot of different organs involved, and each one does a slightly different job. But overall, all put together, they're helping us to digest our food. And so we would, we, we would refer to this set of organs as an organ system. In total, there are 11 major organ systems in the human body. And we're going to be essentially spending a chapter on each of these organ systems, or at least on most of them. So let's just take a look. What are the 11 organ systems in the human body? Here they are, uh, all represented on this slide. We have the integumentary system. This is essentially our skin. Um, on the surface of the body. We have the skeletal system, includes the bones throughout the body, the muscular system, and next up the circulatory system, allows circulation through all those blood vessels. The lymphatic system, this is another network of vessels that goes throughout the body, and this is um, essentially where our immune processes take place. We'll come back to that later on. The respiratory system includes the lungs and airways, the nervous system, this is um, where nervous tissue is going to play a major role. That's going to be a fun section. The endocrine system, this one might be a little bit less familiar to you. The endocrine system essentially is a system of organs that produce hormones um, that circulate throughout the bloodstream and cause different things to happen. So the endocrine system. Next up, digestive system and then the urinary system and the reproductive system. So 11 organ systems in total. These 11 organ systems, if we think about where the organs are located, a lot of them are located in very specific cavities inside of the body. 
And we're going to need to be able to refer to different locations in the body as we go throughout this semester. So let's go ahead and define these different body cavities. When we look internally, it turns out there are some just sort of natural separations that exist inside of the human body. So looking at a human body, what are the major body cavities? Okay, we're going to learn some nomenclature here in this chapter, and it's best to just embrace it now, spend some time with this nomenclature, um, and get down what are these different meanings. So first up, we have anterior versus posterior. Anterior means towards the front of the body. Posterior means towards the back of the body. So right here, we have the anterior cavity, and then right here, we have the posterior cavity. And I'm just trying to hover over. This is the posterior cavity. It includes the cranial cavity where the brain would be at and also the vertebral canal. In the anterior cavity, we have a couple of different compartments. We have the thoracic cavity. This word right here is pronounced thoracic. Thoracic cavity, this is where the lungs would be contained, um, and also the heart would be contained in the thoracic cavity. Right there is where the heart would be located. And if we come down lower in the body, we have what's called the abdominal cavity. This is where a lot of our digestive organs are going to be housed at. Um, okay, so that's it for that's it for major body cavities. Uh, it turns out that these body cavities are lined by membranes, and we already know that. We know that epithelial tissue is what lines things. Um, it turns out there are really four different types of tissue membranes that might be present. So we've got serous tissue tissue membranes. These are membranes that provide lining and lubrication, so that um, so that there's less friction. We could also have mucous membranes. These are membranes that produce mucus in order to provide lubrication and also to trap foreign particles. Um, synovial membranes. These are special membranes that line joint cavities. So they provide lubrication. Uh, they provide a watery fluid that lubricates the joint. And then last up, cutaneous membranes. Essentially, this is the skin. So four different types of tissue membranes that might be present and lining these body cavities. In order to describe position on the body, um, here's, here's another slide with a lot of nomenclature. Again, these are just words that we're going to need to be able to use in order to describe location on the body. So you'll want to spend some time with the slide getting these words down. There are three different planes that we will be referring to on the human body. And let's just go through them here. The mid-sagittal plane, this is the plane that divides the body into right and left halves. So the green plane in this picture, this is the mid-sagittal plane. The frontal plane, essentially it divides the body into the front and the back halves. So um, oh, the way that I remember this one, frontal, imagine it goes through the forehead, through the front of the head um, in blue, right? That is the frontal plane separating front from back. A transverse plane, this is the plane that separates the body into top half and bottom half. Um, so the transverse plane is shown in red right here in this slide. In addition to referring to these three major planes, we want to be able to describe um, even more specifically about like relative position. So how would you describe the location of the hand relative to the elbow, for example? Um, we need to be able to, to describe whether something is closer to the body or further away from the body um, with reference to location like that. So some more terms that we need to know are about relative position. Okay, we already mentioned these first two, anterior versus posterior. Anterior means at or near the front. Posterior means at or near the back. Um, next up on the list, we have another pair here, proximal versus distal. Proximal means something is closer to the trunk of the body. Distal means something is further away. So one thing to be a little bit careful about when we're using these words, um, I have to be comparing the location of two things. For example, I would say that the elbow is proximal to the hand. 
Okay, the elbow is closer to the trunk of the body than the hand is. So elbow is proximal, hand is distal. I'm comparing those two locations. I can't just point to, um, what I can't do is, I can't just point to one specific location like just the elbow. I can't say, oh, this is distal. That doesn't make any sense because I haven't compared it to another location. So, right, I could say the elbow is distal compared to the bicep if I wanted to. Um, but I could also say that the elbow is proximal compared to the hand. Okay, so it's always with reference to something else. Proximal versus distal. The next pair, last pair on this list, is superior versus inferior. Superior means situated above or pointed upwards. Inferior means situated below or directed downwards. Um, so, so... Let's see here, I'm trying to think of a good example off the top of my head. Coming over to this picture, the head is superior to the rest of the body. Um, the legs are inferior to the abdomen. We could also look at how the arm is positioned right here. And we could even say that the hand is superior to the elbow. That's kind of a tricky one, though. That's not a, a great description because this person could move their arm, right? They could just put their hand down if they wanted to. And then my statement would no longer be true. So with limbs, with things that move, it's better to use the distal versus proximal description as opposed to superior versus inferior. This one's not always going to be accurate because it depends on the current positioning of of the body.